Oh my, off cast already. Good evening, welcome to our meeting. Um, we're going to call our meeting to order and ask you to please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Mrs. Sugars, can you please call the roll? Mrs. Scherfain, here. Mrs. Gallagher, here. Mr. Greenbaum, here. Mr. Mayor, here. Dr. Rood, Mrs. Tong, here. Mrs. Winters, here. Ms. Ms. Stern, here. Okay, and we will move on to our resolution to appoint a resolution appointing member to fill board vacancy, 5.1. The acting superintendent recommends, and I move the following motion. Whereas Board of Education member Jen Fleisch, Jennifer Fleischer resigned her seat on the Cherry Hill Board of Education effective December 31st, 2023, and whereas the board conducted a thorough process in accordance with its policy 0143 to seek candidates for the vacant position and to identify an individual to fill the position through the board's next organization meeting in January, 2025. And whereas after careful consideration of the candidates, the board deems it appropriate to appoint Quadzia Niaz at this time to fill the vacancy created by Jennifer Fleischer's resignation. Now, therefore be it resolved that the Cherry Hill Board of Education hereby appoints Quadzia Niaz as a member of the Cherry Hill Board of Education to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Jennifer Fleischer, effective until the board's next organization meeting in January, 2025. Do I have a second? Mrs. Winters, Mrs. Sugars, can you please open- Madam President, I just would like to clarify something for the record before the vote. Uh, this is not, um, this is one of those rare occasions where it is not a recommendation of the acting superintendent. This is a board of education decision. This is the board determination. Thank you so much, Mr. Solicitor. So, <laughs> Mr. Green, shall I rephrase any of what I have said? Okay, thank you. Just want to make sure we're doing, doing it all the way we're supposed to. Thank you. Uh, so I had a second, which was Mrs. Winters. Mrs. Sugars, can you please open the voting? Board members, you may cast your votes. We have a unanimous yes vote. Thank you, Mrs. Sugars. Mr. Green, can you please administer the oath of office? Mr. Green, could you all use the microphone? Thank you. Under New Jersey law, no one is required to swear to an oath or um, to use the help me God phrase by religious freedom, we're free to abstain from that. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Quetzia Nias, I, Quetzia Nias, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith, and I will bear true faith, and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same, and to the government, and to the government established in the United States, established in the United States, and this state. And this state under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. I Quetzianias. I Quetzianias. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. Prescribed by law for the office of member. For the office of member of the Cherry Hill Board of Education. Of the Cherry Hill Board of Education. 
I am not disqualified. I am not disqualified as a voter. As a voter. Pursuant to. Pursuant to. RS19. RS19. Colon 4-1. Colon 4-1. Am not disqualified. Am not disqualified. Due to conviction of a crime. Due to conviction of a crime. Or offense. Or offense. Listed in. Listed in. NJSA. NJSA. 18A. 18A. Colon 12-1. Colon 12-1. And that I will faithfully. And I and that I will faithfully, impartially, and partially, and justly, and justly perform all the duties of that office. Perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations, Miss Niaz. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, and then give it to Mr. Shiva. Thank you. Nice to be a board of nine again. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And Ms. Niaz, I'm not sure if you had wanted to, this was the time of Mrs. Nia, Ms. Niaz had some remarks you wanted to make. Uh, Mr. Green, that, that works? Our board members, we okay if we? Okay, this is a great opportunity for you to feel free to make some remarks. Please do so into the microphone so everybody can hear you. Dear fellow board members and esteemed members of our community, I am deeply grateful for the honor of serving as our, your newest member, and I want to express my sincere appreciation to each of you for entrusting me with this important role. I am genuinely excited about the opportunity to contribute to the ongoing success of our educational system. I must acknowledge the exceptional candidates who interviewed alongside me, their qualifications and commitment to our community's education mission Educational mission were truly remarkable. While I'm honored to have been selected, I want to emphasize that they were equally deserving of this position. I look forward to the possibility of collaborating with them in the future, whether it be on the board or in the other capacities, as we collectively strive to enhance the quality, the quality of education for all of our students. In my new role, role, my focus will be on upholding and enhancing the quality of education for every student in our district. I am dedicated to promoting high academic achievement, ensuring that the needs of our special education students are met with compassion, effectiveness, and fostering strong connections with our community through meaningful outreach initiatives. Furthermore, I am eager to, collab to collaborate with stakeholders across our community to address the diverse needs of our children. It is crucial that we prioritize the well-being and success of every child, regardless of their background or circumstances. By fostering an inclusive and supportive educa educational environment, we can empower our students to thrive academically, socially, and emotionally. In closing, I want to express my heart for appreciation to the Board of Education and our community for this incredible opportunity. I am enthusiastic about the journey ahead and committed to working tirelessly to ensure that every child in our district receives the highly qualified, high quality education they deserve. Thank you for your trust, support, and dedication to the future of our children. Thank you. Okay, we will now move on to our board recognition, which we do not have any, I believe. Do not, no. So now we move on to our presentation. Dr. Morton, if you wanna take us in. Thank you very much, Ms. Stern. Uh, it is my pleasure tonight to call up someone who is on her way up already, Ms. Carolyn Messias, <laughs> uh, who is here with us this evening with some members of the cast of The Sound of Music, uh, the spring musical from High School West. Ms. Messias, if you can call your group up, 
uh, give them an opportunity if they can just uh, say what grade they're in as well. I know you have a diverse, d diverse cast. So, all right, without further ado. Um, do you want us to perform right in front of there or? I think just get in the get into the position yeah. we're gonna sing the song in. Okay. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna sit up to the set and then oh my hair looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm just gonna introduce myself. Hi, my name is Gabby Creighton. I'm a senior at West and I play Maria. Hi, I'm Becca. I'm a junior and I play Liesl. Hi, I'm Tony. Um, I'm, I play Friedrich and I'm an eighth grader at Beck. Hi, I'm Talia and I play Louisa and I'm a sixth grader at Rosa. Hi, I'm Andrew. Um, I play Kurt and I'm a sixth grader at Rosa. Hello, I'm Lindsay Langman. I play Birgitta, and I am a third grader at Johnson Elementary School. I'm Maxine, and I'm Marta, and I'm in Woodcrest, and I'm in fourth grade. I'm Tegan DeSico. I play Gretel, and I'm in second grade at AS1. Salzburg. Well, what songs do you know? I don't know any songs. You don't? No. Well, now I know where to start. I'm going to teach you how to sing. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. Come, I'll make it easier. Just listen. Do, a deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself. Fa, a long, long way to run. So, a needle pulling thread. La, a note to follow. So, tea, a drink with jam and bread. That will bring us back to do, oh, oh, oh. A deer, a female deer, a drop of golden sun. A name I call myself, a long, long way to run. So a needle pulling through, a note to follow so. A drink with jam and bread that will bring us back to do a deer, a female deer, ray, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself, but a long, long way to run. So, a needle pulling through, a note to follow so. A drink with jam and bread that will bring us back to do. Do re mi fa so la ti do.
That was amazing. And I hope that you're all so proud. And thank you. And congratulations to you guys and your families. We're very, uh, many of us were very excited to come see it ourselves. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming out to all of you. And uh, do I say break a leg? Is that the right thing I should be saying? <laughs> break a leg. Thank you, Mrs. Messias. So great to see uh, so many students in our district participating. All right, none of the rest of this is going to be that interesting. It's all it's all downhill from here. All right. Uh, so we do not have any administrative reports tonight, Dr. Morton. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So we will go on to correspondence. Do any board members have correspondence? Mr. Greenbaum. So um, as a BNF chair, I thought it would make sense to give a quick report out on Governor Murphy's budget address this afternoon. Um, obviously, we don't have specific numbers yet, uh, but the outlook looked very positive. Uh, I talked about additional investment in preschool across the state, which is something we're already on our way to do. Um, $30 million more in school meal funding so that no child should go hungry. Uh, an additional 900 million in public school funding, um, as well as some other items that will help hopefully help with recruitment uh, into the teaching field, student teacher stipends, uh, teacher loan redemption program. Uh, we've yet to see how this will impact Cherry Hill's budget, but we should find out later this week. And it was definitely a positive signal. Great, thank you for taking the time to listen and letting us know about that. Timely report. Other board members have correspondence? Mrs. Winters. I got to go to Thomas Paine Elementary School for their literacy night. It was a really amazing experience. I got to see their awesome library that was just renovated and see kids using it to work on poetry projects. I was a mystery reader. I don't know if the mystery of me was really that exciting for the kids. <laughs> it's a board member. Who's that? But um, I did enjoy I had a nice group of kids, and I got to read a really fun book, and I really just enjoyed spending the night at Payne. But the best part of it was that the Carusi administration and students came there to join in Payne's Literacy Night because the middle schools are taking – a real initiative, all the middle schools, to make connections with the elementary schools that will feed into them. And I just think it's a really positive thing to see in the district when you see our schools collaborating and making connections like that. Dr. Birdie was there. Several Carusi students were mystery readers. I assure you they were much more excited to see the Carusi kids than they were to see me. Um, they were wearing their Carusi gear and the kids, especially the fifth graders, there was a real um, intentional way of making sure that the fifth graders at Payne were connecting with the Carusi family. And I, I just think it's such a nice thing to see. I know I've seen it at other schools. I know the Rosa Music Program has been very intentional about connecting with the elementary schools that will feed into that school as well. I know Beck is doing the same thing. But it was just the second time this month that I've seen um, a real new rebirth across school collaboration. I saw it at the Jazz Showcase that was hosted at Rosa where it was really nice to see the middle and high school jazz programs all supporting each other and collaborating. So I just think it's a really positive sign for the district and I hope it's something we can brainstorm ways to do more of. I mean, you guys know I love a good sports match. I love a good football game and sporting's great, but it's also very competitive. I think also fostering collaborative and supportive interactions between our school communities is a really positive thing for the district going forward. Mr. Mayor. Uh, so since our last meeting uh, together with Mrs. Winters, um, I had a chance to sit in on um, our first labor management collective steering committee meeting. Um, it was uh, for a couple of reasons, really um, eye opening one, just to see how um, how well the committee um, is structured, how well it runs and the fact that you know, each of the components, each of the various stakeholders, uh, staff members at the various buildings, um, based upon each of their areas of responsibility, are uh, are not just at the table, but that their opinions, their experiences are valued and are taken into consideration. Because uh, at the end of the day, 
they're the ones that know what works. They are the ones that are, are on the ground. It's their hands, it's their minds. They are the ones working with the students. Um, and um, they are, their ideas are not just you know, off the wall concepts. They're based upon their own experiences and best practices and the fact that um, you know, this group can work together sharing those best practices across the table um, engaging one another and coming to consensus on sometimes some very difficult issues is, is great to see. Um, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be, you know, a part of that, sit at the table um, and um, was, was really impressed with what was brought up um, with Dr. Morton's facilitation of the meeting and genuine desire to ensure that each of the component staff members' opinions, desires, concerns are are aired out, are brought to the table um, without criticism um, and with support across the table and from others in administration. So that was, um, it was a wonderful opportunity. Um, secondly, I had a chance to spend an hour um, with primarily um, with Dr. Burns, but also with Assistant, Pro uh, Assistant Principal Roscoff for a while at um, High School West the Friday before last which was in the middle of you know, some, some tension. Um, however, what was brought to my attention, and we actually walked around the school. So Dr. Burns and I walked around, we spent the hour together walking around, talking to teachers, um, talking to a couple of students as they were you know, passing by in the hallway. Um, and number one, um, the, the school was in amazing shape, um, incredibly calm, everyone respectful. But what was brought to, to my attention and, and actually uh, was, was asked, a couple of staff members asked me to bring to the board, the rest of you, was um, their appreciation for um, board support. The fact that they knew that the board was behind us through those issues. Um, they were um, thankful for our support, thankful for um, the concern that we have for them. They know that we have their back. Um, there was concern from them um, with regard to certain things that they were seeing. Like, look, they, they're on social media too. They knew that what they were seeing just was not true. It was not happening. People were commenting with absolutely no information. But um, they were uh, supportive of one another, thankful that we as a board support them. Um, but so it was important for them to bring that to my attention. And, um, so I felt this, you know, spending an hour with them and with Dr. Burns and with the staff was helpful for me to see just how well the school's handling, you know, everyday issues and some less than everyday issues um, in a way that I think if you were all had the opportunity to be there, you would be as equally impressed as I was. Um, and um, one thing that I left them with was, you know, being there for that time, um, and this is more of a personal note, um, confirmed again for me that, you know, I was, I've always been supportive of our children, all three of them, three of whom chose Cherry Hill West, two are still there. Uh, and it was just not another one of those days that confirmed for me that, um, you know, I supported their choice. I'm glad that they made it. Um, and uh, it was, uh, I'm glad I took the time to be there. Okay, other board members have correspondence they want to share? Um, okay, so I um, had a chance to have um, two nights in a row with Dr. Morton um, and uh, also with Mr. Fain. We had a chance to go to the Barton. Uh, we were invited to the Barton PTA meeting, which was very kind. It was nice to be there. Um, it was a very exciting night. Um, Dr. Mahan was there as well. Um, there was a, it was the um, opening, official opening of um, their um, learning, their newly renovated, a newly designed learning room where they have small group, uh, I guess it's called it's considered small group instruction, students who were receiving um, extra supports. Um, it was exciting. There was a very um, helpful and interesting presentation to the PTA um, by the teachers and the um, staff who were involved in providing those supports and they talked about the number of students that they um, reach in those supports. About 100 students um, are receiving um, uh, tier two and tier three supports um, and doing so in those rooms, um, those kids 
it was just beautifully redesigned, well thought out, very inviting learning environment. Um, kids who don't get to go to that room are kind of jealous <laughs> that they don't get that opportunity. Uh, and the kids who do, who, if for some reason they're expecting to go one day and they get skipped, they get upset that they don't get to go. And we really got a chance to see um, the entire room is supported through Title I funding, um, both in the renovation and the staffing. Um, it's a way that, you know, again, we get a chance to see that um, how Title I resources are really being put into the schools and the students who need them and who are, um, you know, when they're qualified that they're having, they're receiving them. So um, it was a great evening. There were a lot of other things we got to see um, with the PTA and learn, you know, the incredible job of the Barton PTA and, and the job that they do to support their schools, um, their students, their staff, um, the fundraising opportunities. Um, I'm always blown away by um, what they do over there. Um, Ms. Kizzy, um, you know, was was great leading the charge. There was a lot of, we had got a lot of chance, after we got a chance to see the room, um, we then um, had a chance to answer questions. Dr. Morton at the helm answering the vast majority of the questions, and then uh, Mr. Fain and I um, here and there asking, uh, answering some questions. So, um, you know, the topics, some of the hot topics that came up are topics that came up last year. Um, the SAC program, um, one that was this new this year or newer was pre-K. Um, it was very exciting. A lot of questions about um, pre-K. Um, so just a great night overall. Always nice to get to the schools and have a chance to talk uh, and li to listen, and then um, when asked to, you know, talk about things, to talk about uh, things with uh, members of those communities. So great night. Always appreciate that. Um, and then the next night, uh, we got a chance to go to the literacy night at Kilmer. Um, so Dr. Morton returned to his home, <laughs> original Cherry Hill Public Schools home. Uh, saw a lot of people who were very happy to see him. Um, I didn't get quite as many, you know, welcomes, and that's to be expected. <laughs> um, although some some people that I you know got to got to see again, it was really nice to be back. There was nice to see. I mean, it was unfortunately it was a rainy night. I think that deterred some people from coming out. Um, but the kids who were there and the families who were there, just tons of just fun games, very well organized by grade. Um, Miss Daphne's on here, she was there as well. Um, just a lot of you know teachers and staff um, uh, supporting the kids to play games. There were students from High School West who had come over as well, who were um, playing with um, different educational games with the kids. It was just a really fun learning night. Um, it, math and, and reading were really the focus. Um, the kids got to take home educational games, the um, packets that the teachers and staff had put together. They got to take home. Um, uh, books. So again, um, Title I funds um, supporting the students to ins ensure we're really reaching the students who are uh, most at need. And the reason that we, that's what the funds are for. Um, Miss Daniels was great. She was the MC. There was music in the background. It was just a really lovely night. Again, I wish it had been not raining. Maybe we would have had a little more um, a little bit higher attendance, but it was it was a great night, really. Um, and snacks, of course, I always have to have a little bit of food for the kids, so and water. So, um, those are my forays into the community that I can recall. <laughs> so, anybody else? And then, Mr. Fain, if I missed anything from our Barton night or anything you want to add, or no, I was just going to say as a response to some of those pre-K questions, registration starts on the fourth. So if you did not call in to that meeting um, maybe yesterday, yeah. it starts on the 4th. For anyone listening that cares. I don't know, Ms. Winters, if you, do you want to talk about that at all? Or? Um, yeah, we can. I mean, I, Ms. Gallagher and Ms. Sherfain attended the noon preschool open house meeting, and then Ms. Stern and I attended the 6 p.m. meeting. You didn't? Oh. I never made it on. I'm not, I want to be very <laughs> honest and forthcoming. I never made it on to the meeting. I was just listening to what you had to tell me how about it. So we, um, so yeah, we attended the meetings. It was two meetings of identical content so that 
families who are interested in our preschool program with preschool expansion continuing next year could get some information. It was led by Dr. Mahan and Ms. Edwards, who is the principal of the Malberg Early Childhood Center. They provided a lot of great information to families, including the registration window, which is coming up, as Ms. Sherfain said. A lot of good Q&A from members of the community about the preschool program. Uh, a lot of enthusiasm, I think. People are excited for our expansion. And I think that's about it. The presentations will be available for people to view. If they didn't get to see the meetings yesterday, which was Monday, they will be available online for anybody who missed them and has any questions or concerns. But yes, preschool is almost, preschool registration is almost upon us again. It's very exciting. Thank you. Any, anybody else coming at all? All right, we will move on to our um, student representative reports. So we will start with High School East and Matt, if you would like to give the report. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. <Stern. laughs> uh, so starting out with arts, uh, we also have a musical, uh, the spring musical. We have Mean Girls coming up this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as well as next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, stay tuned when the ICSHA quarterfinals and the East Jazz Band, uh, the cavalcade of bands that moved to a, a higher competition group. So big, big uh, time for all of our different musical groups. Um, in terms of academics, we have state testing coming up on March 12th. For clubs, we have uh, the DECA state competition next week in Atlantic City. And the spring blood drive is uh, currently in the works for development. Um, we have the winter pep rally next Thursday on March 7th. And then senior trip will be on March 14th to 18th, giving seniors an opportunity to go to the Disney and Universal Parks in Orlando and make memories with their friends. Uh, Multicultural Day will be on March 28th, and spring break, spring break will be the next day, um, or the first part of spring break, uh, for March 29th and April 1st uh, off school, have, giving students a nice four-day weekend. Um, this past weekend, we had the East Mali UN team go to the Philadelphia Mali UN Conference with the whole entire delegation being named the best large delegation, as well as a number of students winning different awards. The East Robotics team won tournaments in Monroe Township and Milburn High School uh, with top skill score in New Jersey. And for Valentine's Day, the Cum Laude Society hosted the Rose Hill, giving students an opportunity to uh, show love and um, compassion towards their friends. For climate and events, the Lunar New Year celebration was hosted by a number of our culture, culture societies, including the Chinese Student Association, Korean Culture Club, and Vietnamese Culture Club, giving them an opportunity to fundraise and expose um, elements of food, um, art, and clothing to uh, members of the school community. We also, uh, uh, the PLC, including members of uh, student government, held focus groups to better understand student perspectives across all grades. And applications for Mr. East have been released and will be due this Friday night for any interested seniors. For sports, uh, the boys swimming um, made it all the way to the state championship hosted at Rutgers University, and they ended with a 12 and two record, very impressive. And for girls wrestling, uh, Maya Pasternak became the second girls wrestler in school history to make the state finals, um, or sorry, state competition. And from um, just miscellaneous events, um, students had their second early dismissal day last week, giving them an opportunity to uh, have some time off um, a good time for mental health, wellness, and uh, relaxation. And also gave teachers an opportunity to plan and meet with their different um, their different committees and plan for their um, different courses of study. Lots going on, thank you. Okay, and Colin, if you would um, give us the High School West uh, report, please. Thank you, ma'am. Starting with academics, uh, tomorrow 11 colleges will visit High School West for info sessions with junior students and parents. These institutions include Monmouth, Montclair, Rowan, Ryder, Rutgers Camden, Temple, Camden County, Drexel, TCNJ, RCBC, and Seton Hall. For athletics, both of our boys and girls basketball teams have advanced to the playoffs. Tonight, the girls will host BCIT West Hampton and the boys will face off against Ocean City. Um, Winter Cheer brought some great spirit to our sports events this season, thanks to the West Cheer team for their passion and commitment. Spring sports registration is now open, and we look forward to seeing what our teams accomplish this season in boys volleyball, track, unified track, golf, baseball, softball, and boys tennis. 
A special congratulations to West Jr. Quinn Gibson on making his 1,000th point in basketball. We look forward to seeing how, uh, how much he can exceed that number as he goes into senior year. Um, West wrestlers are advancing from regionals to states, including junior Ari Tyson, who is looking to defend her record as the first female champion from West. Moving on to arts, during the month of March, West art students will display their masterpieces for show here in the Lewis Administration Building. On Monday, students were pleased to welcome our newest staff member, Mrs. Jamie Cream, as West's new 3D art teacher. West Theater has concluded their performances of Romeo and Juliet. Our theater staff and performers did an excellent job with the reenactment. In March, Theater Arts uh, will begin to show their productions of The Sound of Music on March 15th, 17th, 21st, and 23rd. Additionally, on the 23rd, there will be a matinee showing for the super seniors of our Cherry Hill community, where West Catering will provide baked ziti, tossed salad, cookies, and other refreshments. This past Saturday, West hosted the quarterfinals of the International Championship of High School Acapella, or ICHSA. Um, men of Note and Vermont Fermata both participated with Fermata taking second place. A special congratulations to senior Skylar Murphy and Gabby Creighton for being awarded outstanding choreography and outstanding arrangement respectively. Moving to extracurriculars, 31 of our DECA students will continue to the state competition next Monday, two of whom are already pre-qualified for the national competition. West Asian Culture Club held the spicy ramen noodle contest. Congratulations to the winners, senior Tommy Rudder and sophomore Daryl Baldwin. Uh, West Student Government held a blood drive with the help of the American Red Cross. SGO was able to collect and donate 45 units of blood for those in need. For other notes, this past Thursday, over 130 sophomore students attended Cotillion for an extravagant night of dancing and socializing with their friends. West Feminist Club will hold a drive for female hygiene products. And on February 1st, the class of 2027 held their glow party themed freshman dance in our cafeteria. And that is all. That's also a lot. Thank you. Great, great stuff going on. Thank you. So much different stuff. It's exciting. Okay. And now we move on to our first public comment. This public comment, uh, there will be two opportunities for public comment this evening. This first public comment session is for board action items only, items 14 through 17. There will be another public comment section for any topic related to our schools at the end of the meeting. If you are a student in the district, you may comment on any item and any topic during the first public comment period. So you guys have special treatment as you should. Uh, if you are a student and you'd like to speak and you're online, uh, please put an S after your name online so that we know that you're a student and we can call on you first. Oh, and I lost my way. Uh, uh, if you would like to speak now, please identify the agenda item and clearly state your name and your municipality. We will alternate between speakers here in the room and those who are online. Each speaker will be given a maximum of three minutes. The timer on the screen will indicate the amount of time you have left remaining. Public comment is an opportunity for members of the community to comment on matters relevant to the operations of Cherry Hill Public School District or within the authority of the Cherry Hill Board of Education. The board welcomes diverse opinions on relevant matters. Under established federal law governing reasonable restrictions on speech in public forums, statements which demean individual community members or groups or which are irrelevant to the operations of the school district or are repetitious will not be permitted. Community members who would like to present information not relevant to the school district are always welcome to communicate directly to the district superintendent, board president, and all board members via email or other or other alternative means. Okay, we will start with the room. If anybody would like to speak, if you are a student and you'd like to speak, please approach the podium. And if there are no students who approach the podium, we will invite any uh, non-student members of our uh, audience who would like to speak on any of our action item agendas. I don't see any uh, students at the podium. And I'm looking online. I don't see any students uh, with raised hands online. So I go back to the room. If there uh, is a non-student who'd like to speak, or not a current student, I should say. I'm glad I'm not a non-student. I'm glad I'm a non-student. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the right language there. There we Whatever. go. Whatever. An adult. Uh, Ann Einhorn, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. 15.10, what do the stadium improvements include in that particular grant? Is that a, information available this evening? 
And 16.8, the additional classes um, at West for math, the six teachers, can you tell me what levels of math are included in that list of teachers? Thank you. Okay, let me go back online. And I do not see any hands online. So we go back to the room. If anybody would like to speak in the room, please approach the podium. There's no one at the podium. I'll go back online. Do not see any hands online. And I'm going to now close our first public comment. We move on to our acting superintendent's comments. Thank you, Ms. Stern. I would just like to say thank you uh, again to the students of High School West, the cast of The Sound of Music, um, as we had an opportunity to hear there's representation from um, all of our schools, uh, children from every every level, elementary, middle, and high school who are participating in, in that uh, show as well. It's a great spectacle to see those kids on stage uh, collaborating together collectively and um, working effectively, as you mentioned, Ms. Winters, towards something positive. Um, so, so kudos to them all. Uh, as a reminder, uh, the show runs March 15th, 16th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd at 7 p.m. And on March 17th, at 2 p.m. Um, we're celebrating our Read Across America week and Read Across America activities currently in our schools. Uh, it's been very exciting to get out to schools and to, and to read with classes of students. Students are enthusiastic, they're bright, uh, intelligent, so informed, and it's been um, such a pleasure uh, to personally interact with them and to watch others interact as well. Um, we've been fortunate to have um, different members of our community I was at Stockton on Friday with the mayor, uh, Mayor Fleischer and Ms. Fleischer as well, reading with a group of kids. Uh, I know there are board members scheduled and others scheduled in the coming weeks also, coming days. Uh, we definitely look forward to it. Uh, so student voice has, has definitely been um, important for us. We've continued to push forward with um, the idea of allowing our students to provide voice um, as we collaborate together and we interact together um, at the high school level. I've enjoyed working with members of our, our Student Advisory Council. I've also had the opportunity to interact and work with uh, students at our middle schools, at Carusi and Rosa thus far. Uh, great, great conversations. Our, our children are very insightful. You know, we've talked about ways to uh, effectively unify student, our student body and enhance the student experience, uh, enhance the way students interact with one another and more positive manners. Uh, we talked about, um, which would be a big topic for us as well, and, and one uh, that's a national topic, um, positive uses of cell cellular phones and how or what places they have within the instructional classroom. I uh, see Matt smiling at me over there because we started the discussion a couple of weeks ago as well, and we will continue as we move forward. Um, I'm very thankful for uh, staff training that has taken place uh, performed by the uh, IAC, Israeli American Council, around anti-Semitism. Uh, we've had our secondary schools trained um, in the last two months. Uh, next week, we also have training on understanding culture, ethnic and cultural perspectives, uh, training around Islamophobia that will take place within the schools on uh, March 4th and 5th. Uh, we are excited to bring Mr. Habib Quadri in from all the way from Chicago, uh, who, who will be with us and who will, you know, helping to broaden our perspectives and provide information. He'll be working as well with our administrative teams also. And it's a great opportunity for learning uh, across the board for, for all of our staff. Um, I think that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we move on to our uh, action agenda. And I'm gonna ask Mrs. Winters, could you please move the CNI agenda? I would love to. The superintendent recommends and I move the following. 14.1, approval of attendance at conference and workshops for the 23-24 school year. 14.2, approval of out-of-district student placement for 23-24 school year. 14.3, resolution approving settlement agreement. 14.4, approval of professional development agreement for the 23-24 school year. 14.5, approval of professional development proposal inspired instruction and 14.6, Approval of Professional Development Proposal, Crockett Cox and Consultants, LLC. Do I have a second? Ms. Stern, are there any questions? 
Ms. Sherfain. Um, I just have a clarifying question on 14.4. My understanding is that this will go towards um, professional development around the pre-K expansion. And I'm not super familiar with ARP funds. I tried to do my best to read that 74 page document before I got here, but I just wanted to, I guess, um, verify that the funds specific in that document, including any addendum from the 2023 addendum that was placed that that can go towards those, um, that professional development for pre-K expansion. Mrs. Shafane, I believe that is correct. Okay. I do not have the exact account number that that was budgeted out of in front of me, but we have tried to use all of our ARP and ESSER funds in any way that we possibly could. Okay. Do any other board members have questions? Ms. Ian. Um, I was just going to I'm going to abstain from 14.3. So we're, we're about to get to the voting. The yep. Sorry. No, that's Sorry. okay. It's hey, it's the first night. <laughs> so we got to, we're getting there. That's it. But thank you. That's that's helpful. We'll we'll get there shortly. Any other questions? Ms. Sugars, can you please call the vote? I abstain from 14.3. Okay. Board members, you may cast your votes. I'm going to vote no on 14.4 and 14.6. Um, I'm going to also vote no on 14.4. And Ms. Nias, I'm sorry. Um, just want to make sure, Mrs. Sugars, um, are you, if do you want to clarify, are you abstaining from 14.4? Okay. I want to make sure I heard you right, too. Other than the exceptions noted, the motions carry. Okay, uh, Mr. Greenbaum, can you please move the business and facilities agenda? Thank you. The superintendent recommends, and I move the following. 15.1, approval of minutes, organization meeting, minutes dated January 2nd, 2024. 15.2, approval of minutes, special meeting minutes, and executive session uh, dated January 8th, 2024. 15.3, approval of minutes, uh, meeting minutes and executive session dated January 9th, 2024. Uh, meeting actually held on January 16th due to inclement weather. 15.4, approval of minutes, special meeting minutes, and executive session minutes dated January 20th, 2024. 15.5, Approval of minutes, regular meeting minutes, and executive session dated January 23rd, 2024. 15.6, approval of minutes, special meeting minutes, and executive session dated January 27th, 2024. 15.7, financial reports. 15.8, resolution for the award of bids. 15.9, resolution for the award of transportation. 15.10, resolution approving the submission and acceptance of a grant application and 15.11, acceptance of donations. Do I have a second? Mrs. Winters, any questions? Yes. Um, I have two. So for 15.8, I know I asked and it was clarified previously, but I just wanted to revisit. Um, my understanding is that we go with lowest bidder, but um, my, Sorry if my math is not correct, but it looks like um, TNL would be the next lowest from first student. So, is there a reason why we're not taking all three of those? We, we evaluate each individual um, bid. And so, there's several items that are being bid within each category. So we evaluate each one individually, and then we add it up at the end, and that's that's the bids that we take. So it's not necessarily based on the entire bid from TNL or the entire bid from Holcomb. We go in and we look at each of the items that were bid on, and we pick the lowest bidder based on that. Okay. Um, I did have one more question. I was hoping that uh, we could maybe expand a little bit on um, 15.10, just what the grant is covering and um, how much is covered by that grant or if the, how that project will work 
after the grant? Sure. So um, this grant that we have the resolution on for tonight, um, we were told, well, the, the original deadline for the grant was today. So we rushed to put it together and get it on the agenda. We found out today that it's been extended to April 16th. Oh, wow. So we would have provided, I guess, a little more information for the board had we known that we had additional time to do that. Um, last year, we applied for a similar grant. This is through the um, Department of Community Affairs. It's a local recreation improvement grant. We applied for the same grant last year and we were awarded funds to supplement the cost of the lighting at the East Stadium, which is one of our bond referendum projects. So the things that the Department of Community Affairs looks for with this grant is um, locations that have um, community usage. So we had submitted an application three years ago for some playground improvements. We were not awarded that. Last year we were awarded for East. And so we thought we'd try again now with West. Since it worked with East, we're gonna try with West. Um, and so these were improvements that we were planning to do anyway. Um, and this is just um, improving um, accessibility to the West Stadium, uh, putting in some um, parking spots, uh, walkways, and some additional lighting. The total cost of the project is uh, pretty significant. Um, it's um, a lot more money than the $100,000 that we're asking for. Um, but um, anything that we can do to supplement the cost, any you know funding opportunities that are out there, we certainly want to try, try to take advantage of. So um, those, that's a project we were going to do anyway, um, but we thought we would try to uh, get some funding to help with the cost. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, Mrs. Sugars, please open the voting. Okay, board members, you may cast your votes. Mrs. Tong, could you use your microphone, please? Apologize. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sugar, I'm just going to send Kim Point V. Everything else is okay. Okay, other than the exception noted, all the uh, motions carry. Thank you. We move on to Mr. Mayor. Could you please move the policy and legislation agenda? Okay, let me go back. <laughs> Apologize. Uh, Miriam Stern, Ms. Stern, can you please move the HR <laughs> agenda? Yes, I'll be happy to move the HR agenda. Um, this acting superintendent recommends, and I move the following. Um, 16.1, termination of employment certificated. 16.2, termination of employment non-certificated. Non-certificated, 16.3, appointments certificated. 16.4, non-certificated. 16.5, leaves of absence certificated. 16.6, leaves of absence non-certificated. 16.7, assignment salary change non-certificated. 16.8, other compensation certificated. 16.9, approval of a new job description and revision and job title. 16.10, approval of sidebar agreement. Do I have a second? Mr. Bain, are there any questions? Seeing none, Mrs. Sugars, could you call the vote, please? Board members, you may cast your votes. Ms. Niaz, if you want to use your microphone. Yep. Um, um, I'm going to abstain from 16.4, 16.6, and 16.7 uh, due to conflict of interest. Okay, then the, other than the exceptions noted, all the motions carry. Okay. Take two. Mr. Mayor, can you please move the policy and legislation agenda? Finally, my turn. Um, of course, happy to do so. 
the assistant uh, or the acting superintendent recommends, and I move the following item 17.1 approval of harassment, intimidation, and bullying investigation decisions uh, with the following amendment on um, incident report number 258585 as amended to reject the school's determination. That is the loan item on the PML agenda for this evening. Item 17.2 will be returned to the agenda um, at our next public meeting. Do I have a second? Mrs. Stern, are there any questions? Seeing none, Mrs. Sugars, would you kindly open the vote? Board members, you may cast your votes. Ms. Sugars, I'll be voting no on HIB number 258585. Mr. Sugars, I abstain from 17.2. I think it's, um, uh, we're moving only 17.1 tonight, Ms. Nias. Is that so? Cool. Are you choosing to abstain from that? No, I was going to abstain from 17.2. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, no. But we're only doing 17.1. We're only, yes, okay. if you wanted to abstain from 17.1 since that occurred before. Okay, you never mind. Oh, that occurred before. Okay, yes. before you were sorry. That day, listen, it's okay. <laughs> we're gonna get there. We're getting there. No worries. So it's yeah, a lot. Okay. It's a lot to do. Ms. Sugars, I'm also going to vote no on um, HIB number two five eight five eight five. Okay, we have one abstention from Mrs. Tong. Uh, and other than the exceptions noted, the motion is carried. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought she, my apologies. That's okay. Two abstentions. Interesting. Scanning. I can. We have two abstentions, Ms. Niaz and Ms. Tong. Uh, we have two. Two no votes on 20, 25, 8, 58, and the rest of the motion carried. Okay, and we have no items for strategic planning, so we move on to new business. Is there any new business to discuss this evening? Any board members have any new business? I do want to put a plug. Um, not really sure. This is um, probably the best time. Maybe it's the best time to mention it. But I want to put a plug for the Cherry Hill Education Foundation. They are having. Uh, they are a huge supporter of our district. They make a lot of. They put a lot of effort and time into trying to support our students, and they are having a Harlem Wizards night. Um, it's the Harlem Wizards versus staff teachers from our district happening on March 15th at 7 p.m. at High School East. I want to encourage everyone to come out and support this fantastic event. Cheer on our staff and teachers to beat the Harlem Wizards in this basketball <laughs> game um, and come and have fun. Hopefully a bunch of us are going to be there. Um, that's the plan. So hope to see you guys there. And Mrs. Rufain, you have a new item, new business? Yeah, something I just wanted to mention also from our Barton night, I just wanted to put it out there for the powers that be. I think it also falls under you and I love assigning you more stuff. Um, <laughs> so one of the parents had mentioned how the summer activity list comes out pretty late to the point where a lot of people can't sign up because they already have other obligations for camp and whatnot. So I just wanted to put it out there that that was one of the concerns from the parents that they were hoping to get that information sooner to make better decisions and be able to participate. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we did one round of summer activities in CNI, I want to say January. And I know that there's another round of discussion coming up for other summer activities. So, but I do, I do feel that because I'm starting to have that panic in my chest about my children will be home all summer and what will I do with them? So I, I completely understand that concern. And as soon as we have information, we'll definitely put it out there. 
Okay, any other new business tonight? All right, do we have any old business tonight, board members? We do not. You sure? Okay, then we're gonna move on to, you guessed it, second public comment. Here it comes. This is the second public comment section during which members of our community may comment on any school related topic. If you would like to speak now, please clearly state your name and municipality. We will alternate between speakers here in the room and those who are online. Each speaker will be given a maximum of three minutes to speak and the timer on the screen will indicate the amount of time you have remaining. As always, we will start with students first. If we have any students, we would ask you to speak. Um, either you're online, please uh, put an S after your name so that we know you are a student and we can choose you, identify you first that way. Um, if you're in the room um, and you're a student you'd like to speak, please do approach the podium first if you would like to do that. Public comment is an opportunity for members of the community to comment on matters relevant to the operations of Terry Hill Public School District or within the authority of the Terry Hill Board of Education. The board welcomes diverse opinions on relevant matters. Under established federal law governing reasonable restrictions on speech in public forums, statements which demean individual community members or groups or which are irrelevant to the operations of the school district or are repetitious will not be permitted. Community members who would like to present information not relevant to the school district are always welcome to communicate directly to the district superintendent, board president, and all board members via email or, or other alternative means. And at this time, we will start in the room. If anyone would like to speak, please approach the podium. Big surprise, Ann Einhorn, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. So I wanna go back to a question that I asked at the last board meeting about the math program. I know that you're utilizing Eureka and expanding the program, but there are two pilot programs at Barton and Kingston called ST Math. So I would like to know um, where does that put those students? Does it put them behind moving forward um, since the other elementary schools are not participating? And uh, I did ask several questions in December. They have yet to be answered. Um, so I'd like to know when I could expect an answer. Thank you. Okay, we go to the line and it's a phone number ending in 891. Please state your name and municipality. Can we just hold on please, oh, there we go. My name is Jeff Potowitz and I live in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. This is about preschool expansion. I have stated before, that universal preschool expansion total on Cherry Hill will exceed a cost total of over $30,000 per student per year. Um, next year, our um, school district estimates that, the, that we will have 540 students in universal preschool. We would need over $60 million. Um, that's the approximate state aid. aid. Please understand that um, the city of Camden, their school district, they get approximately $30,000 um, uh, a preschool aid per student. So th that would even out if we, if we, if we got $60 million, that would be great. I hope uh, we would agree that uh, students with disabilities, approximately 20% of our student population are one of the highest, is now the highest at risk group um, in our school district and in fact, all school districts. However, when it comes to preschool state aid for our community, Cherry Hill and others, these preschool students with disabilities appear to come in last. They're on the bottom of the barrel. The funding is specifically, that preschool funding, specifically not intended for students with disabilities in New Jersey. Um, reading from preschool, um, uh, preschool students with disabilities uh, from the state of New Jersey DOE, the Division of Early Childhood Education, you see if some of the state's preschool aid funding was used for these students, that students with disabilities, the school district would be diluting funding for the preschool program. Okay, so they really don't count kids with disabilities. So when budgeting for classrooms that include both general education and preschool students with disabilities, I suppose um, you could call it including classrooms, the district must separate the costs for these students with disabilities from the students with out disabilities, and then this district has to show this, the state the calculations 
so that state funding for preschool dollars uh, from the state program is not diluted and going to that group that's the students with disabilities. Got it? The most at-risk group? No, they're not entitled to any funds. Um, interesting that the way this state feels, and I think it's interesting, article from New Jersey Spotlight News, April 3rd, 2017, uh, by Ms. Lynn Strickland. The hot button issue of the day back in 2017 is fairness in school funding, the way special education aid is calculated and distributed. She found that it wasn't fair. All right. And she felt that, that it, it was so unfair that it stands out like a sore thumb. Thank you, Dr. And my feeling. Your time is up. I'm sorry. Thank you for calling in. Okay. We go back to the room. If anyone would like to speak, please approach the podium. Hi, I think by now you guys all know me, but <laughs> Janam Salem and Cherry Hill. I just had um, a thought while you guys were talking about um, the program. I don't know if it was a program or it was uh, one of the student nights that you went to where you had the students uh, connect with the middle school students. I really think that needs to be like a a, a real permanent program. I know that all my children had really big issues going from elementary to middle school. I think that's, it's just too overwhelming for them. You know, having one teacher that teaches all the subjects and then all of a sudden you have, you know, one teacher per subject and that gets very, very overwhelming for the students. I always asked for that when I was in, you know, when my children were in elementary school, I really think if you kind of implemented that as a I don't know, a, a day where the, the students could just follow a student and go through middle school with them just that one day so they can get more of a, an idea of what it's going to be like. It is a big jump for them. And they tend to really have issues those first few months going into middle school. I think the transition from middle school to high school is a little bit, um, you know, smoother for them because they're kind of used to moving from class to class and, you know, their lockers and stuff. But I think that first year is, is really, really hard for them. I think we need to implement something where they are more, you know, they, they're just more um, comfortable going into that middle school instead of just, you know, throwing them in from fifth to sixth grade. It's, it's just, it's overwhelming for a lot of them. A lot of them get anxiety. They get stressed out. They're, you know, they, they lose, uh, you know, they get lost in the middle school. So I think that was a, that was a great idea just doing that. But maybe you should implement it as a, you know, as a, a like a program one day, just have the, the students just follow a middle school student, you know, have them mentor them. That mentoring program was something that we did. I thought that was really helpful and it, it helped a lot of students, you know, just transition. So I, I think that's a, that was a great idea. You just brought it up and it was something that I said, wow, I wish that my children had that when they were going from elementary to middle school because they would come home that first week or first month and it was it was hard for them. So yeah, I would appreciate if uh, you guys would consider that, that I think that's, that's a really important thing for our students. All right, thank you. Here we go back to the line. I don't see any hands on the line. Uh, go back to the room. So anybody else would like to speak, please approach the podium. Please state your full name and your municipality. Hello, my name is uh, Jawad Hussain. I live in Cherry Hill. Um, I remember at one of the previous board uh, meetings, there were students from both uh, East and West talking about abolishing the class rank, and I was wondering if any decisions have been made about that. Thank you. Okay. We go back to the line. There are no hands on the line. If anybody in the room would like to sp speak, please approach the podium. Alana Yaris, Cherry Hill. Um, I listened to the governor's budget address today, and I just want to say that I didn't poke my eyes out because it was very boring for me. However, um, I did my due diligence, and the governor has suggested $11.6 billion in funding for district school districts um, with a $908 million increase that will fund fully fund all districts in the state. And hopefully that means that Cherry Hill will get their fair share of funding. So as soon as those numbers come out, I know that you'll be apprised of the situation, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew as the chair of the fair funding committee, uh, I also paid attention and know what's coming. Thank you. 
Very important. Thank you. Thank you for your work on the Fair Funding Committee. Uh, we go to the line and we have Harvey Vas Vasquez. If you could please uh, state your full name and municipality. Yes, hi, good evening to all. Um, Harvey Vasquez, Cherry Hill. Um, I want to follow up on your response to my communication question during the last public hearing. Uh, first, I want to thank the board since I did get a response from the school district to my email in question. But I would be remiss to not readdress the response you provided in regards to my question. While I do understand the task of delegating your responsibilities for the sake of following up with your stakeholders, you mentioned, and I quote, that you wanted to be clear that even though we may not get a response, it does not mean that there has not been a follow-up or consideration of the email. My question to you, Madam President, is how are we to know if no response is received either by you, the superintendent, or those you say may respond on your behalf? I, as a member of this community and a parent of a special education student, want to be clear that I did not get the response until I came here to speak publicly before the distinguished members of this board, this almost a month after my original email to the administration. With all due respect, I truly believe that had I not taken that course of action, my email will still remain unanswered. Still, even after the response we received from the district, my main question as to what approach will be taken to educate my child remains unanswered. These are the frustration we and others within this community have with the way communications are executed. It's hard for us to guess, for example, whether or not you or the acting superintendent did in fact request that someone follow up where there is no follow up. Thank you. Okay, we go back to the room. If anyone would like to speak, please approach the podium. Uh, Yoni Yaris, Cherry Hill. Uh, we're at a cool opportunity in the district right now. We're getting lots of new things, Stadium at East, um, upgraded auditorium at East, or um, APRs at several of the elementary school systems. It's cool, sorry about that. Um, so with that in mind, it brought me back to policy 7250, which is naming of buildings and other pictures in the district that it'd be really nice for us to put together a naming committee because as much as we would love the pipe dream of having uh, naming rights sold, I just don't see it happening. Um, the economy has shifted, priorities of these businesses have shifted, and we've also discovered that some companies, when you get in bed with them, bad things happen like FDX in Miami. Um, so I don't really want to see how that happened, but we could honor people. Uh, one, per, two people that come to mind for East would be uh, the late Len Terranova, who was a champion of the arts and theater, to put his name on the renovated auditorium at East, and Charlie Musumeci, who I know his uh, wife had hoped to have the softball field named after him. I think the football field or the press box at the new football stadium would be excellent to put his name on. He had been someone advocating for that. He was somebody doing restorative practices and things before there was a name for them. Um, he was somebody who didn't care if you were top of the class, bottom of the class, having a rough day, that he was someone who came there and helped you find yourself. Um, he was that person you could turn to. Um, and I also recognize this board is very new um, outside of Mr. Green, having a long time memory of those things, <laughs> um, that a lot of people now don't have that historical memory of people in our district. And I think we're losing that. And I think it'd be nice as part of when you also go through and just start making a catalog of these things before it's too late um, so that we can honor our past and celebrate the future. Thank you. Okay. And we go back to the line. There are no hands up online on the line. So we go back to the room. If anyone else would like to speak, please approach the podium. Okay. No one's at the podium. No one is online. I'm going to close public comment. And I turn it over to Acting Superintendent Dr. Morton for any comments. Thank you, Ms. Thur. Just a couple follow up comments. Uh, question about ST Math. ST Mathematics is a supplemental program that was actually rolled out to all of our 12 elementary schools. Um, all administrators, myself included, uh, support teachers uh, had professional development on that in the summer. Uh, it's being utilized across all 12 elementary schools and it's used in concert with or parallel to the um, primary curriculum, which is, which is Eureka. Um, Ms. Abdul Rahman, our CNI supervisor for mathematics, has done a great job 
in terms of monitoring its effectiveness. She sends out weekly reports to us all to ensure that students are using it, using the program and taking advantage of it. Uh, in reference to the West mathematics classes, they are algebra two classes and geometry. And just in, in, in terms of responses uh, to the community, um, I'll just say like there's tremendous collaboration that takes place amongst the uh, administrative team with the Board of Education, um, with legal counsel as well. You know, when there are processes in place, we allow those processes to, to work themselves out. Uh, and we, appro we, we uh, communicate when the time is appropriate to do so. Um, we apologize for any frustrations and any delays, but we, you know, we wanna make sure that we um, allow processes to work with fidelity. Um, and with that being said, I'll close. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morton. Okay. Um, I make a motion to convene into second executive session to discuss a personnel matters. No action will be taken um, after the second executive session. Do I have a second? Mrs. Winters, all in favor? Motion carries. Meeting is, uh, meeting is moved to second agenda. Recessed. <laughs>